Okay, uh, just do a little follow up. Um, you know, we've been setting up goals and activities the past couple of sessions. So I just wanted to give this opportunity to anybody. Uh, Erica actually shared a little bit how she's starting to do some direct mail campaigns. She's organizing herself and researching different markets and uh, writing out postcards, which is really awesome. Um, you want to share a little bit, Erica, with the rest of the group? Sorry. Uh, yeah, well, I did some um, handwritten cards out to expired listings on the MLS. And then um, I designed like, uh, so I'm uh, designing like, um, like three months at a time, like a uh, little postcards to send out to uh, like um, absentee owners, as well as their tenants. Uh, so I have those kind of like half, you know, like those like half page postcards designed. So I'll be printing those out and sending those out to um, just pulling from, um, what is it called again? Realist? <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah. So yeah, one uh, of those. Yeah, <laughs> one of those. Uh, so um, yeah, that's basically where I'm at right now. It's just, a, just designed to um, try to make people be like, oh my God, this girl again, but I guess I'll call her because she keeps she keeps sending me mail. That's actually my mom. Uh, we get um, we get a little, like every year we get a little calendar, you know, like one of those little refrigerator magnet yeah. calendars from the same lady every year. And it was so funny because I was talking to her about this mail thing. She goes, well, you know, um, we get that calendar every year. When it starts to get toward the end of the year, I wonder if she's going to send it. And then I always thought if we need somebody, then I'll call her because you know, I remember her because she sends me that calendar every year. I'm like, okay, so this direct mail thing does work because they do remember you if you send it enough, right? If they see your name enough times, they'll remember you. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. And uh, I really like that. I mean, I think that's definitely the psychology of direct mail, right? Yeah. Like they yeah. times and they're just, <laughs> you're just in there. Um, but also what I like about that is uh, it's something very measurable, right? Like, you know, mm -hmm. you can know if this starts working, right? If you get responses back to your direct mails, how frequently you're doing it, um, the money you're, you're, you know, spending on sending out the, uh, the mail campaigns, all very easily trackable. And if it starts working for you, you can, you can ramp it up or slow it down or try something new or, you know, whatever it is. But I think you're taking a really good you know, important lesson from the past couple of sessions is like, just try an activity, measure it, see if it works. Right. Awesome. Good for you. Mm -hmm. uh, anybody else want to share an activity that's been working for them? Wes, I'm going to pick on you, buddy. Because <laughs> you got a, you got a big sales goal. So no, I want to hear you. So I, uh, I worked on three open houses over the, over the week. Well, week before last, I did one open house. This past weekend, I did uh, two open houses uh, at One Archer Lane. Uh, the awesome. house the place actually went into escrow before I started my second two open houses, but it was already scheduled. So I continued on with the open house regardless since it was already on the schedule. Um, I had a lot, let me see, seven people the first day. The next day I had um, three. But out of those people, only two, well, two became leads. The rest of the people were with agents. So it was really good. One thing that's interesting is the elevator was, well, two of three elevators was broken during the open house, right? So it was so mm -hmm. hard to get up and down. It was on the 37th yeah. floor. So it was taking me like 15, 20 minutes to go up and down. But the thing is, I was trapped in the elevator with people for like, you know, 10 minutes at a time. So <laughs> oh, how's the market going? So how's, this, how, how's sales going? What units you selling? And I was just passing out, I was passing out business cards like right and left, just stuck in the elevator. And uh, it came to the point where people were, were tracking me down, walking through the hallway. Hey, hey, aren't you that agent selling houses here? Uh, so um, what, what are you doing an open house? You know, what's going on? So uh, I never thought that being trapped in an elevator could actually generate. I don't know if that's a sustainable strategy, but <laughs> but. Uh, so so yeah. my question to you is, who, who did you pay? Who did you pay off to uh, slow down the elevators over there? Building manager. <laughs> they, like, they like the cookies man <laughs> <laughs> nice man good for you so you got some buyer leads over there right so and what i want to do now is i want to uh one a lesson learned from it was uh don't ask people if they have an agent or if you put it on your form they will always say no immediately i mean that's, they'll say no before you even finish that sentence 
So I want to follow through my pitch first and let them tell me, hey, oh, well, I'm working with an agent. And in which case one person did and my script back to them was, oh, that's great. You know, well, have your agent call me. I'm happy to give them updates on the property that you were looking at and providing, you know, if any additional properties that our brokers may have listed, if you look interested in something like this and they're receptive to that. And also I want to start handing out something of value. For, for example, I printed out all these flyers. Be careful with open houses. They get expensive really quickly, as I found out this past weekend doing two back to back. So um, I want to hand out like a market report flyer at open every open house I do. I want to hand them a market report like, hey, here's a market report on this area that you're looking at right now. You know, so yeah. any other questions, call me something like that. Oh, and last tip uh, for the open house. I use an app called Curbio to have them sign in. So I didn't ask people to sign in. I just said, please sign in. You know, because if you ask, people will pass. I say, hey, oh, by the way, please sign in right here before coming in. You know, and everyone signed in. I gave them the option. You can sign in or scan a QR code. So I said, please sign in or scan your QR code. And people seem more comfortable just scanning it with their phone. And then they just put in their name and, you know, contact information and uh, and going about their business. So those are just some strategies and tips and things I did over the weekend. Sweet. <laughs> Love it. Good job, man. Yeah, I think... Uh, open houses seems to be working for you. And that's like um, a really great activity. I mean, and anybody in this group, uh, I've been sending out on the, the mentorship uh, workplace chat, some uh, just some posts from agents uh, in the Hawaii state group that are offering for a sitting open house. So, you know, pay attention to those. And if that's working for you, Wes, you might want to keep doing more, you know, that's an activity that's leading you to direct leads, buyer leads and potential clients. And you're gaining great experience there too of, of learning how to operate an open house efficiently. So good on you, man. Good job. Thank you. Uh, anybody else want to share before we get started? Anything new that you've been trying? I don't have anything that I want to share, but I definitely am going to add that to my marketing funnel, Wes. I'm just going to pick a building and ride the elevator all day. See how many people I can talk to by riding the elevator. It totally, it totally, it totally works. It totally works. Wes is going to start pressing every button in every elevator when he gets there. <laughs> like oh. a little kid. Oh. It, it, it won't work, as Isaiah. Uh, those fobs only let you go to the floor that your apartment is on. <laughs> okay, I gotcha. You thought about it then? <laughs> Cool. Okay. Well, I'll share one. Um, so, you know, some of you might know I've been putting out information on that new project coming into Kakanko. So I blasted that out to my database. Uh, I got some responses from email, called them, text them, set up appointments for um, the opening. So they had an opening to the public for owner occupant sales. I wound up getting six clients' appointments, and then one of them went under contract over the weekend. So, you know, calls and texts equals appointment. <laughs> that's that's basically my thesis statement. There, you got it's you got to be proactive, right? Like nobody's gonna hear about this project and then contact you, right? Like you have to be the one to initiate the information. You have to follow up diligently and just um, you know making sure that your clients in the know, providing value, right? This is something of value, not just pestering them and asking them if they want to buy anything. This is something like I felt was a good uh, value piece of information that was valuable. So I blasted this out to my network and got some some good responses. But you know, that has to be driven from you as as your uh, as the CEO of your own company, you have to make these decisions of when to blast and who to blast to and then you have to also then switch into the salesperson and uh, you know, on your calls and texts, give them information about the process, you know, what's going on, what are the dates, what are the price points. You have to learn all this stuff beforehand, which I did last week by visiting the showroom, and then put them in a position where they're very interested. Now they want to go down to the sales office with you, uh, possibly pick out a unit, and hey, if you do a new development uh, sale, that's probably the easiest sale you're going to do in your in real estate, because once you have them under contract, the developer handles the rest essentially. And there's no negotiating. 
with developer contracts, you'll find that out very quickly. <laughs> that's one contract. <laughs> Either you want it or not, and they sign it, and then that's it. That's that's the negotiation process. Um, so new dev sales, something I've always tried to incorporate uh, heavily into my career and uh, had some good success with it this weekend. Isaiah, once you introduce a client to uh, one of those uh, newer developments, um, do you mm -hmm. follow up with that client monthly until it's uh, constructed, or do you show them any other properties if they call and ask you to see something else? Or is, is there what what else goes on with that? I mean, you don't just leave them hanging until it's until it's built, right? Mm -hmm. uh, no, yeah, that's a very good question. Um, well, okay, so let's take it a step back. So, firstly. I use new developments as a great way to reach out to clients to see what their interest level is and just purchasing in general, right? Like it doesn't matter to me what they buy. I don't necessarily care if they buy into this project or not. I'm not working for that development, but I want to see who's like a warm prospect of mine that might turn into a hot prospect, which we'll go into later. Mm -hmm. um, so by doing this, I say, Hey, look, there's this project, you know, coming up, but I want to, I want us to do our due diligence together, right? Let's meet together. Let's take a look at this. And let's also look at other options in your budget and see if there aren't other things you might be interested in as well. It's just my way to loop them back in into the market. Um, so, you know, by using the new development, and if they go for the new development, great. But I always want the peace of mind in my head as a buyer's agent that they've reviewed other options before they lock them okay. themselves into a contract. Uh, because these things are super hard to get out of. There's 20% deposit. Uh, it's a three-year timeline. So, you know, I don't want them having FOMO <laughs> after they yeah. their uh, deposit is, is locked in. So I want to make sure at least I have some, some consul consultation period where like here's everything else you can get in this budget you know make sure this is the one you want um make sure you know because it's not built yet right there's there's risk involved make sure you understand these risks uh but after the contract process yeah you know there's not much you can do besides waiting around until the thing's built there's deposits which you have to you know follow up with and then there's there is a final inspection uh with these called a punch list walkthrough it's similar to a j3 uh final final walkthrough so this is when your client has an opportunity to, to inspect their unit before closing. So you should be present for that, for new builds. And then um, you make a list with the developer if there's anything like, you know, missing or there's scratches in something or wh whatever, if there's some sort of defect construction wise, they will fix it before closing. And then there's closing and then, then you're done. So new builds are take a long time, but are super simple and, and easy. So to be clear, you get paid on the back end um, after they've taken possession. To be clear on that, right? What do you get your money? <laughs> uh, so traditionally, it has always been like that. But there mm -hmm. are some developers offering, like Howard Hughes uh, offers 50% after 30 days, That's which is the cancellation right. period for new builds. So they'll give you half up front, which is really nice. Um, there's even some developments that do 100% up front. Uh, that's like park at Kiyomoku. Um, that's that's on Kiyomoku Street. I, I don't know. They that was wild. They just started doing that or offering that. Um, so yeah, it, it depends. But but I would say the great the vast majority of developers they're gonna pay you at closing because they don't have the pockets to to pay you up front. So you know, if you're yeah, if you need that cash flow, it's not great. But you know, the way I look at it is like. They're they're gonna they're gonna go for that anyways, right? So you might as well lock in that sale, and then you have like cash flow coming in later when that thing does close, and then you can divert your attention to another client um, after they're under contract. That makes sense. Yeah. Yes. All right. Cool. Great activities, guys. Love it. Um, another slide. We went over this, but here's all. A running list of, of things that you guys can be doing on a day-to-day -day basis. Hang on a second, guys. I'm gonna pop on my AC. It's getting hot in here. Okay. Uh, yeah, really stoked to see some of you guys doing these things and finding success with that. Open house, direct mail, um, other networking, and SOI calls. 
Okay, uh, today's topic, I wanna to do working with buyers. Uh, we've talked a lot about this subject and today I wanted to go over a pretty simple roadmap um, that you can follow when you're working with buyers. And uh, of course, you know, I wanna preface this by saying it's just not gonna be a deep dive into each section, which is probably its own subject uh, or class in its own right but at least this will give you a, a map to follow um, and know which areas within each section that you have to, to work on. Um, I think we had a few agents during our activity uh, sessions talk about how, you know, we, we all know the activities they wanna do to, to get clients, but once they get a client, they're not sure what they're gonna do, right? Like there's some uneasiness there. They wanna go out and uh, talk to everybody, but we really want to make sure we have our procedure down for when you do get a client, you know, what are you going to, how are you going to help this client, right? How are you going to help a buyer? So uh, today we're going to outline that. Um, as usual, if you have questions, just raise your hand or jump in and let me know um, if you need clarification on anything. Okay. Um, first thing we want to do is identify our, our buyer prospects. Uh, so for me, I do three categories, very simple. Hot, hot clients are ready to buy now. They have a timeline set. They need to close by a certain period uh, or they wanna close by a certain period. You're in communication with them every day. Essentially, you're making it clear that you're working hard for them. So these, you'll know when you have a hot prospect right away and they're pre-qualified and they, uh, or they have their cash ready. You know, they're seeing properties, you're showing properties to them. They're very active and you're talking to them you know, almost every day. Uh, warm clients, they are thinking about buying something. Uh, they're curious about the process and the market, and you're in touch with them once a week or so, keeping them posted on developments, sales, market reports, updates, you know, helping them um, staying, staying top of mind, right? While they get to the point of uh, whatever it is they need to do. And I've had clients that say, I want to buy, but it's going to be in a few months. I'm waiting for this to happen. I'm waiting for, you know, like, a gift fund or you know bonus or my my home closing on the mainland or whatever it is they they have a uh a future plan to buy but you know they're pretty serious about it once that that occurs um cold clients not actively looking to buy but people you want to keep in your database maybe have you know further future plans to buy you're still in touch with them semi-frequently and have them on a marketing trip so for me cold clients go on my email uh, database newsletter, send them newsletters. They're in my social media, not necessarily talking directly to them all the time, but they're getting my message, right? Like they're in my, my marketing plan. Um, so that when they are ready to buy, I'm staying top of mind. Uh, and I, I brought up this example before, but I had a, a client that I did a buyer consultation with. Uh, so it's like four years ago. And then I put him in my database. He said he wasn't quite ready and that he was going to wait out the market a little bit. And then he stayed on my email uh, campaigns. And then three years later, he reached back out to me and said, I'm ready to buy now. Uh, <laughs> I've been getting all your emails, find it very valuable and let's go, you know, let's get me pre-approved and then start looking at units. So uh, don't forget about cold leads, put them in your database, save them. You never know when they're going to come back out of the woodwork or give you a referral. If you stay top of mind, then they're gonna, you know, if their friend asks if they know if they know any realtors and you're giving them constant communication, they might refer them to you. Any questions on prospects, categoriz categorizations? Pretty simple, right? Isaiah, are those categories okay. from uh, Ninja Sales? It's from Ninja Sales, but, uh, but pretty much Sales 101, you know, like that's that's just how it's done. Okay. Um, I keep a uh, separate Excel sheet outside of my CRM for hot and warm leads. I don't put cold leads on there, there's just too many. Um, but that helps me, uh, you know, on a daily basis not to forget about anybody. I don't trust my brain. I don't trust the human brain. I trust, um, you know, data <laughs> and worksheets. <laughs> So yeah, I'll keep a running list, uh, which I'll update frequently. You know, if someone's moving from warm to hot, I'll put them in my hot category. If they're hot, going from hot to warm for some reason, 
I'll move them down, but just my working here are my, my, uh, here's my inner circle of clients, right. That I'm, that I need to be communicating with regularly. And it keeps you focused, right? You're like, sometimes you're like, sheesh, like I don't have any escrows right now, but then if you have a list going of like, you know, hot and warm prospects that that's comforting, right? <laughs> like I got these people and uh, I just need to work harder for them or, you know, be, you know, show more properties or whatever it is you got to do, but you have those people in your pipeline. So uh, visualizing that is, is very good. I think for just your mindset overall in sales. Okay, let's go step one on the buyer roadmap. That for me is the buyer consultation. Um, I don't consider anyone a really a client until we've done this step. Um, so what occurs in the buyer consultation that will get you to the next step? You're gonna have a meaningful conversation on your buyer's wants and needs. Uh, things I ask for, time, what's your timeline to buy? Are you paying cash or financing? What are the, your future plans with, this, with these properties? Is it for investment? Is it a family home? Is it a vacation home? Are you renting it out? You got kids on the horizon? All these things I need to know uh, in order to start finding you the perfect property for you. Um, what are your areas of interest? What neighborhoods are you looking at? What neighborhoods do you hate? That's a question I always ask my clients because um, we don't know really all the neighborhoods that they love yet. But certain clients have a good idea of which ones they absolutely don't don't want to live in. So that's a funny one I ask. Um, are you look, interested in new builds, condos, single family homes? These are all important questions, right? Um, communication methods. I want to know how often they want to be communicated with. You know, are, do they like text? Are they not a text person? They want phone calls, emails. Um, let's nail that down and then deliver you an efficient communication method that you're, you're good with so nothing gets lost. Uh, and then showing schedule that works for them. Um, I want to know what the best days are. If they work nine to five. I can't can't schedule showings, you know, on a Wednesday at eleven a.m. Right. So we're gonna have to do an evening or week or a weekend thing. Um, but some people might say they're they're good. Like any time they work from home, um, and that you know you're able to to get showings done on a pretty short short notice. So. Uh, important items. And then for you uh, on the agent side, you want to be explaining your scope of services during this time because um, this is important. Um, they may be interviewing other agents and you do want to give them your scope of services, right? So that you're winning, you're winning this, this, uh, the job of becoming their buyer's agent. So uh, things I go over uh, on my end are my, you know, I have my referral partners, my recommended um, like team. So lender, home inspectors, escrows, I make sure that they'll know that I've got all the contacts for them. Um, you know, getting these things arranged will not be a problem if they did talk about financing, but they don't have a lender. Great. I've got somebody oftentimes, actually, what I started doing this year is having um, Justin, who you guys met during the um, one of the state meetings and also one of the, the past mentor Mondays. Uh, you know, lenders are a bit are a bit less busy this year too, <laughs> in case you haven't noticed. Um, so I started asking Justin if he'd be willing to um, sort of be be on standby if I have a, a big buyer consultation coming up, uh, just in case if they wanted to start talking about financing right away during the consultation, he'll jump in into the Google Meets and then start getting them pre-qualified and I'll jump out because you know I try to keep that separated. But I found that works works you know, very cool. Uh, it's, you know, just having a lender come in right away to ha have that handoff where like, yeah, I'm ready. I just need to get pre-qualified. Okay, great. Let me, let me bring in my, my lender right now. And then you could start talking about financing and get the wheels in motion for that. Um, so, uh, yeah, that might be something you want to think about. Uh, but just having these, these I, these these people on your team um, sets a good tone to your client that you are ready to help them. Um, purchasing process, contract explanations, and guidance. Uh, I don't go necessarily over all of this during consultation, but I let them know that that's what I will be doing for them. And you, as uh, uh, even as a new agent, you should be well. Um, uh, 
you should be well qualified to talk about these things. You should be prepared to talk about these things, uh, contract explanation, the purchasing process, um, you know, escrow timelines. These are all things you are expected to know even as a new agent. So um, really study that. And if you need to role play, role play, but be ready to talk about the contract, be ready to talk about the purchasing process and how you're gonna get them from start, start to finish. Um, company on showings, you know, I'm going to be with you on showing negotiations. That's, that's my part, right? You know, we'll, we'll submit an offer how you want to offer. And then it's my job to try to negotiate with the seller. And then I talk about available technology. Um, this definitely helps with younger clients, uh, or as well as older clients too, but just letting them know, like I'm up to date with all my tools. So it's going to be super seamless and easy for you. We got the portal ready to go. So I'm going to set you up with a portal. You're going to get listings, um, uh, listing alerts, market updates, uh, digital signings. You know, you know, some clients actually do ask me this. They're like, my last agent uh, would have to come to my house and get everything signed. So do you have a digital signing? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, yeah, I absolutely do. Um, so yeah, if you, the more, the more tools you're able to talk about, I think that's uh, better. Um, a better represent, representation for you. It shows that you're in tune and you are learned all these things in order to make their life easier or the sale easier. So uh, market reports, listing alerts, that's all in the portal. So know how to talk about those things too when you're representing your scope of services to a potential client. Um, okay, so does anyone want to tell me what the end result of your buyer consultation should be? How do you close a buyer consultation? Sign by a representation agreement. You got it. Okay. So um, after doing that, you know, a result that you will want to have is them really excited to work with you and start a real estate journey with you. And so uh, having the buyer rep contract is a great way to finish the meeting. It's like, great. You know, you know, all the things that I'm going to do for you now, you know, uh, all the resources that I have. And just in order to start our working relationship, I just have a simple one page uh, or two page agreement um, that just names you as my client and I'm your agent. You know, are you okay with that? That's that's really all you have to say. And if a client's unwilling to sign this or unwilling to to get pre-qualified or, or whatever, um, that should tell you something about their true intentions. You know, um, if they are willing to do this stuff, you know, you, you have yourself a hot client. So that's why we, categorize the prospects to begin with. And then we have these, these ways to qualify clients and put them in the right category. Uh, if they're like, sure, let's sign this buyer reps, you know, contract and get, and get started. Then you know now who to focus your time on as an agent because they're ready to go. They've shown you their, their, um, their commitment to you. Uh, the client has shown their commitment to you. Uh, and you have protection, you have a buyer's rep contract. So, um, yeah, without that buyers, you know, uh, beware, um, there is a saying in this business, uh, buyers are liars. <laughs> so, um, they may tell you they're working with you, but they're also working with three other realtors that whoever shows them the property first is basically how a lot of buyers act. Uh, I went through it over the weekend, one of those six appointments that I showed you. Uh, I called back my client, the client, um, and said, "Hey, we have your appointment." And then they said, "Oh, sorry, some, you know, our our friend called us an hour ago, and and also like got that appointment also. So we're going with them." Said, "Okay, <sighs> right? Like that's that's something that happens very very fr frequently, which is another reason why you want to get the buyer rep in place. Um, but on the client's end, especially if they don't." know you through a referral, um, very easy to sever ties with a buyer's agent. Um, and there's a lot of confusion too, you know, like a lot of buyer clients, especially if they're first time homebuyers, they don't get it. Like, and they're probably getting bombarded if they they're talking about how they're, they want to buy something, right? Like how many, how many realtors does every person know on this Island or the other islands? Everyone knows like 10, right? So once the word gets out, they're trying to buy a place. I'm sure they're all um, getting messaged right from other realtors as well. But if you have this piece of paper signed, um, that's a very important, important piece of protection for you as the agent. 
right? You know that. And psychologically too, like now that 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 person, that buyer client knows they signed a piece of paper, right? So like their loyalty is documented on a on a contract. Um, so that should just make you feel a lot more comfortable with spending a lot of time. Buyer clients, generally speaking, do take up a lot more time than listing clients. Why? Because there's no end end timeline, right? And there's it could be anywhere <laughs> that you're showing property to, and it could take however many much length of time that it takes. There's there's no definitive end. Um, so uh, you could sell a listing in in less than a week, right? But a buyer client, typically, you're looking at probably at least a month. Um, you know, maybe longer. And also you need to factor in the escrow timeline as well. So um, beware of that. And that's why you should get tr strive to get buyer's rep contract in place so that you're not wasting a bunch of time with somebody. And then they go, oh, thank you for showing us a bunch of properties. But we're, you know, our cousin, we forgot our cousin does real estate and, you know, we're, we're going to buy that property now with them because <laughs> every realtor that has experience can share a story of that happening to them. Any questions on that? We can go through buyer rep contracts separately, but like I said before, we're gonna kind of just go over the process here of uh, the roadmap. Nope, okay, cool, let's move on. Uh, step two, pre-qualification. Uh, like I mentioned on your consultation, right? You're finding this out, choose your client need to get pre-qualified. If they're paying cash, um, can they give you a VOS? Uh, I, I would probably wanna see one. Um, now you can use your best judgment if this is somebody that's coming in through a referral um, and you know, you, you've you researched their you know, whatever their career is, their background, and you're like, okay, you know, I'm not going to push it with that. That's fine. But if it's somebody brand new and they're like, yeah, I want to go see, you know, $5 million properties and you have no idea who they are and no, no background information, I, I would probably want to see a VOF, you know, before I start scheduling showings with high end listings. Um, that's pretty standard for, uh, for, you know, showing, showing practices. So, um cash or cash or finance you want to get some sort of form of pre-qualification um so work with your lending partner if they're financing to get a pre-qualification and then prior to going on showing try to get a, a pre-qual or vof um me personally my policy i'll do maybe one showing appointment without somebody being pre-qualified but after that I, I will cut it off and say if you want to continue like we got to get you pre-qualified because otherwise, you know, some people will, will just use you for, you know, looking at properties, <laughs> which is a hobby for some people. Um, so, yeah, uh, I, I will I will try to take an appointment at least if somebody says, you know, I want to meet, I want to look at this property that, you know, really badly and I haven't consulted with them or, or pre have them seen their pre-qualification yet. I will do one of those, at least get some face to face time, see if they're for real. That's worth my time. Right. But after that, um, you know, I'll need to see some some form of proof that they're really trying to buy something. That's what you need it for. Plus, the way you can explain that, why you, why do you need a prequal from your buyer anyways? Like, what's an easy way to explain to to people why you need to have them prequalified? Who's going to want to see it? Seller. seller yeah <laughs> hey it's not for me the seller is going to need to see it um and yeah elaine is exactly right there too uh you're competing against other buyers they've all been pre-qualified if you owned a property and you got an offer two offers one with somebody who's been through pre-qualification pre-approval whatever and one who has not same price who are you going to pick the one that's that's serious right the one that's proven to me that they can afford this one so you need to put that mindset onto the buyers and let them understand that um, if they are serious, they will get pre-qualified. Um, I think a lot of new agents struggle with that. They don't want to push it, um, but you should be well, well versed into why that's important for this procedure. And also for yourself, remember to protect your time um, because if you're spending a bunch of time with somebody that's not, not pre-qualified, that's time you could have, spent on marketing or prospecting um, and finding a truly hot lead. 
So remember that when you're working with buyers and before you start showing. Step three, showings. Okay, so after your consultation, uh, after they get pre-qualified or have their VO app, now you have a working budget, right? You wrote, wrote down all their wants and needs in the consultation. So you're able to now go into the to the MLS and create for them a nice portal, um, put in all the properties, potential properties that they might be interested in, uh, and then start feeding them listings. Um, right after that, I'll set up an auto email, right? So that they get uh, further updates when new listings hit the market, enter into the portal, they'll get a nice email on their end that says, uh, Wesley has sent you three new listings that hit the market this morning and you'll get their little picture. Uh, they'll get your picture. So you're keeping them in your cycle, even if you're not communicating with them every single day. Um, if they're getting those listings, you know, oh yeah, Wesley, I'm working with Wesley, right? That's, that's what people, the psychology behind that. Um, so you want to set that up. And then have constant and open communication with your buyer and check to see which properties have been of interest to them uh, on one home they can leave the heart button i really like that that is so easy for me um, if they've selected uh, on their portal which properties they like i already know that and now i can just call them and schedule see what their schedule is like to set up showings for them um, set up the showings and accompany your buyer until you've found the right one. Um, yeah, you wanna attend showings with your buyer. That's great, FaceTime, um, you know, build trust, build rapport. Um, yeah, so so do that as much as you can. Um, do not limit just to the MLS, check for new developments and available inventory. I just gave you guys a, a direct example of how you can do that. Um, don't just rely on on listings right try to be creative like if they're look in, interested in an area like kakako well you're gonna have a lot of unlisted inventory right with new projects coming up howard hughes always has extra available inventory that they don't market on the mls um you know attend state meetings um we do have a section in our state meetings where agents talk about upcoming listings so wow but that's really valuable information right um so yeah, don't rely just on this portal. Um, you have as a buyer's agent, we have a lot of automation, but you know, you still have to you still have to actively work with your client on these and try to find them properties that they may not be getting um, access to through just your portal. Uh, and for, for showing best practices, we did a whole session on this, um, which we have the link to here. So uh, we do log all these sessions and then we have them in our library. Uh, I do post them on the Mentor Mondays workplace group. Um, but if you weren't there for that, uh, I did a whole class on, on just best showing tips for showings. Um, so I put the link in here uh, and I'll put the slides into the group, the uh, workplace group as well. So you have access to that. Do you guys have questions about this section, step three? This is this is the fun time, the showing time, right? Like this is when you're you're going to different properties and you're getting to know your client and there's no stress yet, right? You're just shopping, shopping with your friend, basically. Um, so this is, you know, I, I always tell clients this is this is the most fun part, right? Okay. No questions. Okay, we'll go step four, offer and negotiations. This is your time to shine, buyer's agent. Um, here's the things you should be prepared to do during this step. Be a master of the purchase contract and all the addenda and zip forms. If your client wants to, you've done all this work, you've done the consultation, you got them financing, you've uh, set up the portal, you've shown them a bunch of properties and then they say, okay, I'm ready to offer. Well, you'd better be prepared to do that. <laughs> you better know what to do and to do it in a timely and efficient manner, right? But like timing is always everything. Um, if you're taking forever to write up an offer, um, people might get get second thoughts or cold feet. Um, you know, like it's it's such an emotional journey, right? Like the sale that you know you don't. You, this is the last thing you want to have to burn a lot of time on, right? All the other time that you spend is is where you want that time, like it could take time, but the offering process should be automatic for you guys, right? Okay, great, you wanna put an offer, here's the information I need. 
Um, I know how to draft it up. I know how to explain it to you. And then I know how to also send it over to you for digital signing, get it reviewed by a broker. These are the things you can master right now. Um, so if you haven't, like work on that, you know, practice writing up purchase contracts, practice writing up offers, practice explaining the contracts to people that are not agents um, because they'll have asked similar questions that your buyer clients might. So if you have family members, friends, ask them for 20 minutes of your time, and just run through a contract with them and say, here's, here's how the contract works. Here's, you know, section J, section I, here's how do I, I explain this. Um, just really become a pro at that. And this will bleed through, um, through all aspects of this roadmap is your working knowledge of the contract. It'll keep you confident during your consultation, right? I know how the contract works. I know how the offering process works. I know how a transaction works because you've studied the contract. When you're on showings, people ask you all the time, you know, what happens in this situation? You know, can we get a, you know, what if we find a bunch of things that need to be repaired? Uh, is the maintenance fee going up? This and that. Well, all that stuff you can answer by knowing the contract really well, right? Uh, Wes, how will I know if the, the HOA fee is going to go up after I buy this thing? Let's say Ron is showing. I'm just picking on you for role play. Oh no, that's that's an excellent question because during my uh, open house, I had that same same question. Um, so okay. okay, well, just to just to uh, give you a little more information on the showing this particular property, uh, they, were, they had a special assessment for the building. Uh, it was for fifteen thousand or twenty thousand dollars, depending on the unit that you purchase. So a lot of the people looking at properties, they were asking me. So I heard there's a special assessment. How much is it? Uh, and I, I, I just so happened the listing agent had already printed out the information from the association. And he had that prepared for me in the open house. Should I get asked that question? He also had a list of all the things that were involved in the special assessment and what was he was really, really prepared. You know uh, what was being prepared, what was going to be uh, fixed during the uh, maintenance period. So in that question, in that situation, I just told the client, "Hey, um, so this is what a special assessment is because they were working with agents, mind you, but." So I told him this is what a special assessment is. In this case, this is what it is for this building. And uh, and that's for then the next question. Oh, you know what? I'm sorry. Let me back up a bit. I got in the elevator, elevator pitch again. I met a client. She said, well, prospective client. She said, hey, I want to buy, I want to purchase a property in this building. Are you doing an open house? I said, yes, yes I am. I'll be happy to show it to you. The person in the, in the elevator, another guy said, hey, you shouldn't buy in this building because, you know, the market's terrible. And you know it's just going crazy right now. And there's a special assessment anyway for this building. That's just a random owner in the building, just having to be an elevator. So I told him, I said, well, you know, I know there's a special assessment in this case, ma'am. You're interested in it's been paid already, but you know we can discuss that a little bit farther. And then the guy in the elevator, he jumps in again and said, well, but what you don't know is there's another special assessment coming down the pipe, like in another year. And I think it's like twenty grand is something really big. And at this point, the person's looking at me like, huh? there's another special assessment <laughs> coming you know and so oh i yeah. didn't get her contact I, I failed to get her contact information by the way in this because I, I i didn't have a good rebuttal for the uh, gentleman but uh in this case i would just tell him you know i would speak with the association and ask them do you know of any special assessments that are coming down the pipe and can you give me a print out of your, your reserve study you know what what's going on so i can see what's going on with the building but like i said in this case it was already done i had my hands on the information so it wasn't a big lift to just pick it up and read it or just walk to the office and ask. Uh, from your question, uh, Isaiah, I would have just said, hey, you know, we can we can definitely call the association and post those questions and see what they see coming down the pipe as far as uh, special assessments. Keep in mind that it's not all inclusive. There could be something that's unplanned that could come as well. So it may not cover everything, but we can't tell you what they're aware of to date as far as any special assessments that are coming down the pipe. That's what I would say. OK, that's pretty good. That's that's good, but what I'm looking for is contract knowledge, right? Uh, playing a factor into your answer. So, can anyone tell me which section would answer that question? Uh, oh, okay. I'm oh, sorry. Contract. <laughs> Wait, what Anybody? I think it's F. Is it F? Nope. I don't know off the top of my head, but. <laughs> Okay. What I see, people. What I see in this class is a bunch of people that need to be studying the purchase contract more, <laughs> because it's section M 
Okay. And I, I always let, cause it's every client that you should take to a condo is going to ask you this. Uh, so section M is for the condo document review period. So yeah, I'm glad you asked that question. You know, we can definitely look into that, but did you know per contract, the seller does have to provide for you a whole set of condo documents. This includes various disclosures about any awareness of maintenance fee increases, special assessments, et cetera. So you will be aware of all that information and you have a right to cancel in case the, you know, it's not the result that you wanted. Simple as that, right? Um, so per contract, you're getting this information from the seller. They have to provide it for you. And we have the ability to make an important, crucial decision about whether you want to live in this place based off of that information per contract. So for me, that provides a lot of, uh, on their end that provides them with confidence that I know what I'm doing, right? I know the contract by heart. I know the protection. What they're really asking me is like, you know, how are you going to protect me in case I get information that that I don't like, right? Is the way I look at it. Um, so knowing the contract well alleviates a lot of concerns because they know that I know how to protect them because I know the contract very well. That's really how a transaction works. Is just it's on it's on the contract. It expels out exactly what what happens during a transaction. Um, so if you know every section very well and how to explain them, you'll be able to answer all these questions during your consultations, during showings, during the offering process, during escrow, all, all facets of this will, will, it'll be beneficial for you to, to know the contract very well, because that's what it is. It's a contract, right? It governs the transaction. That's how it's supposed to be run. Both parties agree. This is the way it's going down. Section J, you get a home inspection. This is how many days you get for the home inspection. If you don't agree to the home inspection results, you can cancel by this date, right? Section I, seller's disclosure, they have to provide any uh, any material facts via a written form um, that has to be provided within this many days. And if you don't, you know, if there's something in there that's scary, you have the right to cancel, right? So, so buyers will ask all these kinds of questions, you know, all the time. And what they're really looking for is confidence in you. Are you the person that is able to protect me if things go wrong? So if you don't have the experience in that, it doesn't matter because it's all in the contract. That's why this is the number one thing. In fact, I didn't really have a mentor coming up in real estate, but the senior salespeople always told me, oh, you want a mentor? Just read the contract. <laughs> so they told me, just read the contract. You know, and that's what I did. Uh, and it's helped me out so, so many times um, because, you know, you start recognizing the common questions that people ask and they're not testing your knowledge. Like they want, they're asked, are you going to protect me, right? During this transaction? What if there's a lot of, you know, this is an older home. What if there's like so many things that are broken? How would you answer that? which section of the purchase contract. <laughs> Wes, anybody else want to jump in? Wes is off camera. Okay, he's pulling out his, his contract. Uh, for the purpose of time, I will say right away, it's section J. This is like the most, one of the most important parts of the transaction, pivotal moments. So, oh, you're worried about, you know, you're worried about, things breaking right okay well we have the right per contract to hire our own home, professional home inspector they will go through all the appliances they will look at you know anything that is visible uh within the unit they'll run the water they'll check the electrical panels um they'll do all this stuff and then you'll get a big inspection report within x amount of days and then we can do a number of things there right if there's a lot of repairs that we weren't aware of that are needed to be made in order for this place to be livable. Uh, we can negotiate with the seller. We can try to get some credit, you know, try to have them repair stuff. Um, or we can take on the repairs ourselves. Maybe it's not a huge deal. A lot of times the reports say minimal stuff like replace the outlets with GFCE outlets, put a drip pan under the washer, <laughs> and then you're good to go. Um, so I'll go to Home Depot and get a drip pan for my client. That's no problem. Um, 
But yeah, but the important thing I'm telling you here is that you recognize their concern. They're worried about old stuff breaking. Okay, well, this is how we counteract that in the, within the contract, Section J, home inspection. You will get the report. You pick the inspector. You know, they're working for us. If they don't, if you don't like all the stuff that come up in the report, you can cancel. Or you can say, hey, I'll, I'll buy this thing if the seller gives us this much money to, to make the repairs. So... You know, yet another case of a common question that occurs. Do we have a lot of old properties in Hawaii? Yeah, I would say so. Um, reports are big, the inspection reports are big and scary, but um, you know, you you as the buyer's agent, you know, that you have to be aware of these concerns working with buyers and how to how to help how to help them through it, right? Like I'm you're here to guide them on this. Yeah, everyone's gonna have concerns about the property that they're spending their life savings in so you as a professional you should you should be even as a new agent you should memorize the contract essential essential skill set there's no excuse if if i'm a new client if i'm a client of yours and you don't know how to explain the contract to me i'm going to work with somebody else you know plain and simple you have a lot of time on your hands you know to work on this and this is the most vital instrument that we have uh, in real estate. So you as a professional should be on top of it. You should know how to answer every question that you might face. You should know how to explain it in very simple terms to a client. Uh, and you should know how it works. And you, you can, you can do it without any experience. You can learn the contract without any experience. Once you do go through a transaction, things will, will, you know, start to make more sense maybe when you actually go through those periods. But you can you can learn how to explain what they are, and you can always talk to brokers or other agents about certain sections and their stories of of how like what happens there and like or who do you call and like you could start researching through there too who your your team is right. If you need a if you read through the home inspection part and you're like I don't have a home inspection referral, well now's your time. You can go you can go look up home inspection companies and see which ones are the best reviewed. What do they offer? You know what are the prices like? um you, you can do all this stuff now by using the contract and learning learning what you need to prepare for each step of the transaction condo doc period there's a bunch of documents in there <laughs> that are like legalese right but you can get samples like I, i'll share i'll share old sets of condo docs with you guys if you want i have just have them sitting around you want to look at you know, annual budgets and reserve studies. Sure, be my guest. You know, that's great. Like you, you should know what these things are if you're selling condos, right? Now's your time to learn. And it's all spelled out on the purchase contract, all this stuff. So you should be going through each section, making notes. How do I explain this? What do these items mean? What are these documents for? Let me research. Let me Google. If I can't find the answer, let me reach out to my mentor. If they don't know how to answer, let me reach out to my broker. You got a lot of a lot of resources and support here, but the initiative is on you to become a master of your craft. And it all starts with the purchase contract, in my humble opinion. Any questions on that? Okay, cool. Well, we'll do eventually a purchase contract role play. So aren't you guys, you're going to have to start learning it. <laughs> well, um, I did this a lot in Century 21, but basically something like we were just doing with Wes where uh, I'll drill you on certain sections or ask you questions that, that uh, buyers always ask. And you should be ready to answer it. You should be drawing your your answers from the contract not guessing not think you know this is maybe the answer right no use the contract <laughs> it's the contract there's no disputing the contract right um so it'll save you in many ways you know how many times have you been asked a real estate question where you don't know the answer and then you start to come up with something just to sound smart people can see see through that you know so don't don't fall into that trap know the contract okay um next up is escrow uh congrats on opening escrow now all the fun begins uh <laughs> or ends um 
here's where, yeah, you're really, your, your job activates. Okay. So, um, the contracts negotiations are done. Um, you know, everything, all the preparation, preparation, all the talking, all the, all the an question answering, you know, pre pre purchase is, is over. Now you're into, you know, making sure this thing lands, this plane lands. Um, so you've got, you know, timeline management, you know, the first thing you should be doing when you open escrow is creating a schedule for yourself. Here are all the important dates. Here's when the home inspection is coming up. Here's when the deposits are due. Here's when the seller's disclosures are supposed to come. Here's how, how long a review period is. Here's our title report, you know, where who's getting the title report. How do I know how to read a title report? Um, condo docs, survey, termite inspection, lender items. Like you gotta, you guys gotta know what all this stuff is and, and how it works. And again, this is all learned through the purchase contract. It tells you everything in there that you need to know and what are the dates. Uh, if you need sample contracts, you know, if you want to look at those, I think we have those or we can easily get those for you or your mentor can, give you, you know, give you a, a redacted or purchase contract with typical timelines in there and you can study out there. Um, but yeah, you, you know, these com all, all of these components will come up and they'll come up fast. Um, once you open up escrow, your, your deposits do like a day after. Okay. What if your client asks you like, what, what do I, you know, how, what do I do with the deposit? Right. Do you know how to answer that? Um, you know, you, you, you gotta go down to escrow. You gotta bring a check down to escrow. You need to then for opening escrow, you need to, to work on your file. Uh, sky slope file you have to upload all the docs um you've got to get uh then those documents sent over to escrow and then open open up an account for you excuse me guys um so you know there's a lot of work uh, up front initially and then um things start flying at you right like seller's disclosure you got to schedule the home inspection you get the title report you know um condo docs surveys if you're doing single family home termite inspection companies, uh, lender, like the lender is going to start working with your buyer and, and um, going through their uh, application process and underwriting. Um, so, you know, you've really got to expect this stuff and know like, you know, you, you can't just get into escrow and then try to figure all, all this stuff out as you go. Um, you should be aware of what is to come and then be ready to know what to do for, for each item, right? If you get a seller's disclosure, um, you know, you can study that right now in the forms and you can see what kind of questions they are. They're standard forms. So um, it's not a surprise when you get it, right? You can get us, uh, you can download a seller's disclosure. You can see it's all multi, like multi cho uh, choice answered questions. Um, you know, this, this, every seller's disclosure is essentially the same the way it's formatted. Um, and then you can read, you can be prepared. You can read what type of questions that are, the sellers are going to answer. Uh, you also know that there's a receipt that is attached to the seller's disclosure. So you need to know how that works. You get a receipt, you have your buyer sign off on it. And then that starts the review period. It triggers the review period, but I've had agents who sign everything right away <laughs> and initial the whole disclosure with the review and send it back. And I'm like, well, you know what you just did? You just approved the seller's disclosure. Um, by having them sign on it. What you're supposed to do is send the receipt only over, hold the seller's disclosure. And then when, th when that is done and approved and reviewed, then you send it back. Um, but agents, you know, they don't read the instructions or they don't have experience with it. They didn't ask what to do with it. So they just sent back a, a signed disclosure, you know, within a day. Um, so, you know, you can study these things now and be prepared so that you know what you're doing when you get them. You know, there's there's really no excuse. If you have access to all this stuff, again, the onus is on you as the agent to be prepared, even if you don't have the experience or someone telling you to, to look at this stuff. Uh, I'm telling you to look at this stuff right now because it's all there for you. Um, if you want to know, like, how a home inspection works, go go on YouTube and, like, watch a home inspection, you know, video. There's, there's tons of them. Um, so you can you can research all this stuff and then be prepared and then you'll know with a home inspection, you know, they take typically a couple of hours. Here's all the things that they do during the home inspection. And then you have your client come back for a review period, which is at the end, which would take about half an hour where you can meet with your home inspector 
um, and then they'll take you through the whole home and let you know exactly everything that they found. So, you know, know how that works so that you can prep your client and let them know about each of these steps, right? We got the J1 home inspection. We got to do this in 10 days, 14 days, whatever you put in the contract. We'll get a home inspector. Here are my recommendations because I already have them ready to go. Here's how the home inspection works. You know, it's going to take a couple hours. We'll, then we'll be invited back to the home for the review period. And then, you know, we'll get the home inspection report later on that day. I recommend doing it very early on. You know, as soon as we get into escrow, let's schedule a home inspection. Why? Because if we have anything that needs to be negotiated with the repairs or credits, we need to allow time for that. Just because a home inspection period is 14 days doesn't mean I should get a home inspector to come on the 13th day and then have enough time, you know, to make our decision. Like you get the report, you still have to leave time to negotiate with the seller if there's negotiations to be done. So you got to be very thorough and research these things beforehand so that you're prepared to talk to them. Because once you get into escrow, it's a very emotional time for your client, right? And there's a lot of outs. There's a lot of cancellation routes that they can take. And if they're feeling uneasy, they're going to cancel. I would if I don't feel if I don't feel good about this transaction. But how do I feel good about the transaction? It's because I know I have an agent that's on top of it that's keeping me aware of what's going on at each step. Oh great, they just sent me a timeline of all the dates I need to keep track of. Oh great, you know, I don't have to worry about the finding a home inspector because he already got me one and they arranged on this date and then they already explained to me what what's going down on this whole process. Oh, here's the seller's disclosure. You know, good. I was expecting this. The agent already told me to expect this and what kind of questions that we'll see on there. And also that I have this many, many days to review it before I have to send it back. Right. These are, this is how they will think if you're prepared enough to, to learn about all this stuff. Um, you, you're providing great reassurance on the client's end that you know what you're doing and that you're protecting them because that really is ultimately your responsibility and your job is you're looking out for your client and you're taking them through this, you know, dangerous road <laughs> and, you know, rocks are falling and, you know, you're, you're trying to swerve rocks and this and that, but you know, you're, you're, you're in the driver's seat. So um, this is really, I'd say the most crucial part of your job is, is being responsible for all these different steps and being a great guide. Uh, on the on the uh, through the purchasing process. Any questions about escrow? It's a whole nother topic again, but I'm just trying to get through this roadmap for you guys so that you have uh, an outline to work off of. No, nope. okay. Well, if you make it through there, you got the closing. Um, this is the best part, right? Uh, you made it. Uh, things you can do for closing, help prepare them for moving day, you know, set them up with utilities, transfer. Um, if they wanted a home warranty, you know, you could do that through out of escrow. I just got one of my clients a home warranty um, and I, I paid it out of escrow. Uh, really easy to do. And then they were worried about the appliances. So I was like, my gift to you, here you go, home warranty. You're protected for a year. Anything breaks down, you know, you get it fixed for free. Um, so I think that's a pretty nice gift. Um, you know, do, do whatever you want really, but I think a gift is nice and customary. Um, and also, uh, gives you a nice like photo op or that, that will probably translate into referrals too. If you just provide the ultimate, you know, start to close experience and finish it off with a nice gift for them. Uh, Hey, Michelle. Yeah. Feel free to jump in. Isaiah, can you clarify how to um, get it paid through escrow as opposed to on the credit card after? Yeah, um, you got to do it in advance, but uh, you can just um, contact the, the warranty company um, and they'll prepare an invoice. And then if you want to pay it from your commissions, you would just use it, do a credit uh, from your commission. And then the home warranty will be paid through escrow once they have the invoice. Escrow will pay them. Thank you. Sure. Yeah. Um, so yeah, a gift is nice helping them out. Um, sometimes I'll drop by a move-in day, uh, ask them when they're moving in and I'll bring them lunch. 
I won't help them move, you know, <laughs> heavy objects, but I'll, I'll definitely come by with some, some pizza or some sandwiches and check out the new pad. I think that's a nice, nice thing to do. Um, and then on the agent side, you're going to close out your file on Skyslope. You're going to get a nice commission check. And then now you can celebrate a nice win. All the work's done. And you got your first sale. Then you got to worry about the next one. <laughs> Where's the next one coming from? But at least take a day. I'll just take a day to chill out and celebrate a, a nice win uh, and market it too, right? Blast it on your social media, you know, just close, super happy clients, this and that. Here's what we did. Great story. <clears throat> you go one more time um, for our roadmap items. Step one, just for reiteration, the consultation. Step two, pre-qualification or VOF. Step three, showing time. Step four, offers and negotiations. Step five is escrow. Step six is closing. So if you follow this, you'll have a good understanding of like your prospects, you know, you, hot, warm, and cold. If you use that along with the buyer roadmap, you'll know where all the moving parts are and where your clients are at each part of the process. And that will help you greatly, I think, in organizing your business by knowing where your prospects are and also knowing where your clients are um, on this roadmap. Do we have any question about that or discussion points or? Anything you want me to explain a bit more, now is the time to do so. Someone's got to have a question. Erica, how do we feel about that information? It's good. I, it's a good roadmap to follow because then it's like, I think it's all, um, like I've been trying to watch the old like uh, reported videos of like Jennifer going over the purchase contracts to kind of write down a lot of things that she says that kind of help explain. Because I, like you said, I think that's really an important thing to do is really get to know that contracts. So um, for me, that's something I've been wanting to focus on and what, you know, kind of like a Cool. I've been set, trying to set every week to get to know the contract a little more. So um, that's definitely something I'm going to continue. Uh, and I've, you know, the escrow timeline management is really um, like I, I'm a list maker too, anyway. So for me to be able to map that out for the like, just thinking of myself as a client, that's something I would like really want. So it's just I think it's all good information to have. Yeah, it should be standard operating procedure, right? But then there's there are clients that are like, wow, thank you for sending me the dates of the things that I need to do for, <laughs> to close yeah. on this property because because <laughs> not every agent will do that for them, which is sad. Right. But you know, I think you should put that into your your like the purpose of this right now is the roadmap is for you to think about everything that you're gonna need to either learn how to do mm -hmm. uh, in each step or prepare for. So if you say, Okay, Nascar, here's what I'm gonna do. You know, I'm going to provide my client a timeline. I'm going to, right, like, mm -hmm. you know, help them out with XYZ, like, put mark that in, like, use this as a template and mm -hmm. then create, maybe go create your own timeline right now while you have time and say, like, here's yeah. what I would provide to my client. Um, yeah. And you can do that for, for each of these steps, right? The consultation, like, you know, you, you know, that there's a consultation that needs to happen. So are you confident in your consultation? No? Okay, well, you can practice, you can research, you can learn how to do a really good mm -hmm. one. You can prepare a questionnaire. You can, you know, are you going to do it on Google Meets? Are you going to do it over the phone? I, I prefer all the time uh, Google Meets now. Mm. It's my main method. Um, I think, you know, it's a nice medium between phone call and in person. In person now, it's like kind of like everyone's so used to COVID times, right? Where like nobody's leaving their home or we have so much virtual meeting access that 
unless they really want to push for an in-person meeting. Uh, I would, I would personally prefer, and I think most people would prefer over Google meets because it's like provides the face-to-face -face interaction without like having to physically go somewhere. And then I'm way more prepared because I can pull up things, share things from my computer, you know, start a portal with them. It's mm. fun. So um, I try to do almost all my consultations on, on Google meets. And if, if they only will jump on the phone with me, you know, they're like a, a warm client at best for me. Cause I, I don't know who they are. They don't know who I am. So very easy for them to start working with somebody else. Right. But like the simple face to face thing, I think puts a face behind a voice and they recognize you're actually a person that's going to work for them and, and builds a lot of trust. So, uh, so I always recommend try, try to do face to face as much as you can, um, via, um, virtual meetings. Hmm. Um, yeah. And then again, like pre-qualification, if you don't already have a lending partner, like start looking around, you know, figure these things out, um, interview lenders, find someone that's working that wants to work with you or, you know, makes the pre-qualification process simple. Maybe they'll jump on calls with you like they do with me. You know, that's, I love that. I think that's great. I don't want to talk about financing. It's not my, it's not my area of expertise. I'm not supposed to talk about financing. Here, talk to Justin. He'll help you out, right? That's the way I want to do it. Um, and then when you're done talking about your finances, we'll we'll find something in your budget. Um, I like the I like the team aspect too. You know, um, if you have somebody you've been working with or are familiar with, that makes the process nice and easy for your client too. It's comfortable, right? Oh, I'll talk to Justin. You know, we've been working together for a while. They trust. They they'll feel comfortable with that. Um, and then showings, yeah, like, you know, I, I have a whole class on it for showing practices. You can go to open houses and take tours and really iron out your, your showing procedure, download all the right apps and everything. Um, so, so yeah, so, so use this and, and really now plug in the things that you start really mastering um, so that you're prepared for, for each step. And I, I will post the slides for you guys on the mentorship group so that you'll have access to this. And then we'll also do the recorded session as well. <laughs> Anybody else have any final thoughts or want to chime in on anything? Kelsey, I saw you nodding your head a few times. This is helpful for you. Super helpful. Thank you so much. Just laying it out. And it's, yeah, I'll have to go through. Um, I did have a question for the like contracts and stuff. You can find that in Star Slope. Is that correct? Or you uh, HAR contracts are going to be in zip forms. Zip forms. So, okay. yeah, you can you can like set up a sample. Just do like a sample transaction. You know, fake transaction. And then add in the forms, purchase contracts, buyer's rep agreement, mm -hmm. everything in there that you'll need to know is is in zip forms. And you can pull up a blank copy and you can practice filling it out. You can print them out and take notes on them. Um, like I said, you can practice role playing with the contract and just get very good at like, you know, learning, learning each section and being able to describe it um, in order to answer people's questions. Um, yeah, so so basically like any HAR form you can pull up in there and study it. You know, why not? Why not? You're gonna need to know them. Uh, Emily just also sent a link over for the PC 101 classes. So as you're practicing, you have we have all of our classes, you know, recorded and linked. So like you don't have to wait for these classes to learn. Um, Jennifer Andrews is probably the best in the business of explaining the purchase contract. Um, so it's, it would be so worthwhile for you to pull up one of her old PC 101 classes or most recent one and give it a listen while you're going through the contract and listen to the way that she explains it. 
and brings up examples of, of what can happen during each step. Um, you know, here you're getting basically a Jedi master of the purchase contract explaining this stuff to you. So you don't have to rely just on your mentor or on your own to self-learn. You have access to all this, all this wisdom and knowledge from the broker team. Um, and it's recorded for you. So five classes are fun, but like, you know, if you want to really ramp up your learning, you know, um, you take advantage of the recorded classes just so like, why don't you set a goal for yourself, right? Like by the end of the week, I'm going to learn, I'm going to know how to, how to run through a contract with, with a client, you know, like start building goals based off the roadmap, right? Like maybe your goal is this, this week, I want to nail down my consultation and, you know, basically have a format that I'm using for the consultation, you know, and then, or yeah, like I said, like, let me, let me run through a contract with somebody that's my goal for this week and let me watch the pc 101 classes or reach out and reach out to my mentor you know whatever it's going to be but you could build goals off of this list off the roadmap just so you're you're a pro at each step okay guys any other any other um last Last words here. Let's you got your your plan this week. Uh, this week, I'm actually going to look on the uh, on um, workplace and see if I can find anyone that has an open house available for um, this weekend on Sunday. I'm trying to see. Uh, well, I want to do at least two a month. That's the goal. Uh, anything more more than two would be a bonus for me if I can do that. And I. I I really I like to get a buyer sign, honestly. Uh, pushing for that too. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I, uh, yeah. I just find it challenging to balance. Um, I know you put out a lot of information. I get a lot of information from my own mentor as well. So balancing the stuff we need to know how to do proficiently, as well as uh, lead generating and prospecting, is a little challenging. Uh, that's all. Uh, so yeah, I would yeah. say I would say um, don't put don't push the cart before the horse. Yeah. So like the fundamentals are crucial in order for you to activate marketing and being able to take in those leads. Right. So like at least get the fundamentals of the purchase contract and like offering and things like this down so that you can sign a buyer's client and have confidence, you know, how to close them. Right. Cause like the marketing's, the marketing's not going to be effective if you don't know what you're doing when you get the client. True. Right. True. <laughs> so sure. so yeah it's it's gonna be all for not you know at the end of the day if you don't have that that know-how of what to do when you get them so um you know focus on your your mm -hmm. fundamentals uh, you know as long as you can first and then you know get into the other areas like um marketing etc lead generation yeah but this this will it will give you the confidence you need to have those conversations when your marketing does go out, right? Like, oh, you're, you're interested in buying? Great. Let me set up a consultation with you on Google Meets. Let me introduce you to my lender. Let me do this. Let me do that. Like, I know how to write up a contract. I know how to get it off reviewed and signed. You know, I'm, I'm capable of this, right? You want to be able to say all that stuff in your elevator pitches or your phone calls. Um, Literally. So, elevator. like, prepare prepare that and then go out into the world and share you know what you have to offer okay guys well uh good session today thanks to everybody who attended sorry for the um link confusion this morning but glad to see you guys stuck around um we'll do another session in a couple of weeks but as always, we've got our broker team and our admin team um, available for you guys if you need support. So uh, we'll be in the world as usual during business hours, um, available on Workplace Chat. If you need any of the materials from today or the links and stuff uh, that I was talking about, just, just uh, message me on Workplace. We're very responsive there. So that'll be the best 
way to get in touch with us if you're not in the world. But yeah, okay, well, um, I will let you guys go then. Thanks for attending today. And uh, yeah, let us know if you have any questions about this stuff. Thank you. Sounds good. Thank you. All right, everybody. Have a good week. Bye. All right. Aloha. Aloha.